Gears of War has always held a special place in my heart, ever since I was a kid. Ever since its inception, it has been the king of third person shooters. So in this video, we will be looking at the Gears of War iceberg that I created. For those of you who don't know, an iceberg image is a list filled with different facts, theories and trivia from well known and as you dive deeper below the iceberg and water, more obscure. So I'm your host Abs and the question is, how deep does the Gears of War iceberg go? Make sure to chainsaw your way through that like button and consider subscribing if you do enjoy the video. This is the Gears of War iceberg explained. Let's do this. The Coalition of Ordered Governments, also known as the COG. Colloquially shortened into the Coalition, the COG was a supranational and intergovernmental military collective originating on the planet Sera. The COG had its own armed forces, spread over all of its member nations. There were four branches of the armed forces, the Army, the Air Corps, the Navy and a logistics branch known as the Engineering Corps. The entire Coalition military was commanded and supervised by the Coalition High Command. Locust Horde The Locust Horde, often called Grubs by the Sirens, were a race of mutated humans that established their own civilization in the subterranean regions of Sera, known as the Hollow. After the end of the Pendulum Wars, Queen Mira commanded her people to emerge on the surface of Sera to exterminate the humans becoming known as Emergence Day, waging a 17 year long war that was nearly successful in the extinction of the human race. Crimson Omen The Crimson Omen is an emblem consisting of a red skull surrounded by a cog. It is part of the official logo of the Gears of War franchise and appears several times in gameplay throughout the series. Our boy Marcus Phoenix so Marcus Phoenix is the face of the Gears franchise and the main protagonist a legendary war hero who served with distinction in the Pendulum Wars and who fought bravely against the Locust Horde alongside Delta Squad and the rest of the COG. Marcus led humanity to victory over the Locust and the Lambent, but he was at a loss of what to do next after losing both his father and Dominic Santiago along the way. Epic Games The creator of the Gears of War series was Epic Games. In 2006, Epic released the Xbox 360 and PC bestseller Gears of War and completed working on Unreal Tournament 3. On November the 7th, 2008, Epic Games released Gears of War 2, sequel to the best-selling shooter on the Xbox 360. Due to the success of Gears of War from Gears of War 1, 2 and 3, the studio were also awarded with IGN's Best Developer for Xbox 360. On January 27th, 2014, in a statement by Microsoft, it was announced that they had acquired the Gears of War franchise from Epic Games, along with the news that Black Tusk Studios would be responsible for developing new games in the series. From March 10th, 2014 onwards, Epic Games handed over all of the Gears of War assets to Black Tusk Studios. Lancer Chainsaw The Lancer is the signature weapon of the Gears of War franchise, even more widely known than the Nasher Shotgun but the Lancer always and has been unique due to it being produced with its notorious and distinctive chainsaw bayonet. The chainsaw consists of razor sharp carbide tipped blades powered by a variable torque motor and is capable of killing an enemy in seconds. Mad World The launch trailer for Gears of War in 2006 was named Mad World, with the song Mad World covered by Gary Jules. Since the song had the atmosphere of Sarah, it fit perfect for the series. The song is also featured twice in Gears of War 3, most notably when our boy Dom sacrificed his life. <sighs> Rest in peace Dom, I still miss you every day. Cliffy B Cliff Bozinski, also known as Cliffy B, was the lead designer on Gears of War and known for his work on Gears of War 1, 2 and 3 and one of the main reasons behind the IP's huge success. 
Cliffy B worked at Epic Games since 1992, but after 20 years with the company, Cliff announced his departure from Epic Games on October 3rd, 2012, never to be seen working on the Gears of War IP ever since. Gears Books and Comics So the Gears of War book series consists of a five volume series written by Karen Travis and published by Del Rey in collaboration with Epic Games as well as two novels written by Jason Huff in collaboration with The Coalition and then Gears of War Affair Arising being the eighth novel in the Gears of War series which takes place between Gears 3 and 4. From the Epic Games era of novels we had Gears of War Asphalt Fields, Gears of War Jacinto's Remnant, Gears of War Anvil Gate, Gears of War Coalition's End and Gears of War The Slab. And then in the Coalition's era of novels, we had Gears of War Ascendance, Gears of War Bloodlines, and Gears of War A Fear Arising. And for the Gears of War comic series, the Gears comic series consisted of a 24 issue publication from Wildstorm and DC Comics with collaboration from Epic Games, as well as two series made and published by IDW Publishing in collaboration with The Coalition. The aim of the comics is to fill in the gaps between the games and the books and to expand the universe of Gears of War. So in terms of comics, we have had Gears of War Hollow, Gears of War Baron, Gears of War Dirty Little Secrets, Gears of War The Rise of Ram, Gears of War Hivebusters, as well as standalone issues and graphic novels. Cog vs Cog in Gears of War Judgment. So throughout the original Gears of War trilogy's multiplayer, we were accustomed to two main factions, the Cog vs the Locust Horde, and these were the two main teams in multiplayer, Red vs Blue, Humans vs Monsters. But Gears Judgment was the first Gears game to put COG up against one another in multiplayer. Many people skipped Gears Judgment for various different reasons, and Judgment generally wasn't received as well as the previous games. But this was one controversial decision given how much the fans absolutely loved playing as the Locust Horde in multiplayer. Niall Samson Dr. Niall Samson was a geneticist and the creator of the Locust Horde acting as director of the New Hope Research Facility under the Department of Health of the Coalition of Ordered Governments during the Chairman Monroe administration. The New Hope Research Facility was initially built to study the effects of rust lung on the children of emotion miners and to find a cure. However, when Niles began using transgenics in order to cure emotion sickness, his work eventually warped into an attempt to evolve humanity mutating the children into the sires under his supervision at New Hope. UIR The Union of Independent Republics, or UIR, was the chief rival power to the coalition of ordered governments during the Pendulum Wars for many natural resources. The UIR's greatest achievement was the creation of the Hammer of Dawn technology, which Chairman Thomas Daliel wanted to capture and use to end the war. The UIR was eventually defeated by the COG and the people of Sera enjoyed a new era of peace. The war was ended when the COG stole the Hammer of Dawn technology from the UIR and used it as a threat. Therefore, the Union of Independent Republics were forced to surrender. The peace between the UIR and the COG only lasted a few weeks before, well, you know it, Emergence Day. Two Piece a two-piece is a term that Gears of War players have coined for a specific technique. The move is often frowned upon for its usual instant kill outcome and overall ease of usage. The act of meleeing an opponent with your shotgun and then immediately shooting them with the shotgun, usually killing them. If done correctly, it is more or less a two-shot kill and will leave you undamaged. Of War Removed Gears of War first arrived way back in 2006 and since then spawned one of Xbox's most beloved franchises. Every game after that followed the simple naming convention of adding a number to the end of Gears of War, with the exception of Gears of War Judgment, which got a little bit wordy. Gears 5, the fourth sequel to the Gears of War franchise, dropped the Of War moniker. A lot of us really didn't question why, as the franchise had long since been colloquially shortened to just Gears anyway. Most of us called it Gears, right? But ultimately, many fans didn't like this, because although most of us called it Gears, it was still Gears of War, wasn't it? Rod Ferguson at the time stated, We wanted to make sure that the franchise stayed Gears of War, because we have comics and a novel and movie and other things. We still wanted to be Gears of War, but I was trying to find a way to just help modernise it, because you know, we're Gears of War, the next generation, so I wanted it to feel a little bit different. 
What are your thoughts of the other wall being removed anyway? All I will say is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Gridlock in almost every Gears of War game. Gridlock is arguably one of the most well-known Gears of War multiplayer maps. Positive or negative, it was first introduced in Gears of War in 2006, being an iconic, well-enjoyed map. Gridlock made its return in Gears 2, in the flashback map pack. It returned again in Gears of War 3, set at night time, and also included the Mad World Easter Egg, which always got you in the fields mid-game. Gridlock returned once again in Gears of War 4, but by this point it felt quite overplayed, and some fans wondered that there have been other quality maps over the years that deserved a comeback instead of Gridlock. Next up, Gears 5. And Gridlock, you guessed it, returned yet again. Sometimes you die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. And this, in my opinion, is the case with Gridlock. The Grinder removed from Gears of War 3's Beast Mode. The Grinder, aka Mr. Good Old Buckethead, was of course the Boomer variant equipped with a Mulcher machine gun and the grinder was supposed to be originally playable in Gears of War 3's Beast Mode, but they were taken out for unknown reasons. I don't know which unlockable tier the grinder would have been in, but I'd assume the later tiers, as the grinder does inflict heavy damage. I wish I could give you more information as to why they were actually removed, but that's all the information I have on that. It would have been very cool for sure to be able to play as the grinders in Beast Mode. Carmine's Faces Underneath Ben Carmine's helmet is the head of Min Young Kim, as we are not supposed to see his real face, and Kim's character model is used as a default generic cog soldier body. So for all the cog soldiers you see in Gears 1 and 2, they're most likely all Min Young Kim's knocking around, the coalition of ordered Min's. This is the same case for Anthony, and even Clayton as well. So basically Clayton is just a buff Min, and you are able to see this through ghost camera in multiplayer and zooming into the helmets. Gears of War, the board game. From 2011, 1-4 players take on the roles of COG soldiers, cooperating to destroy the Locust Horde, and must work together to complete missions against a challenging and varied game system. In Gears of War, the board game, you'll relive classic moments from Gears of War and Gears of War 2. Roadie run into cover, spray your enemy with blind fire, or rip him in half with your lancer's chainsaw. Only through teamwork and communication will you gain a tactical advantage, completing your mission and striking a blow for humanity. Clayton Carmine's fate decided by shirts. The Fate of Carmine campaign was a fundraising campaign started by Epic Games and Microsoft that allowed players to determine the fate of Clayton Carmine at the end of Gears of War 3. The campaign's proceeds went towards Child's Play charity. On July the 29th, 2010, Two new Avatar t-shirts were available on the Avatar Marketplace on Xbox Live. Each one determining the character's fate. One read Save Carmine and the other read Carmine Must Die. By purchasing the Save shirt, you casted your vote to let Carmine live in Gears 3. On the other hand, by purchasing the Die shirt, you wanted to see Clayton follow the fate of his brothers Anthony and Benjamin. In the original Gears of War, Anthony Carmine met his gruesome demise after being shot through the head by a local sniper at the House of Sovereigns. And in Gears of War 2, Benjamin Carmine met his fate after being eaten alive by nematites and dragged over acidic spikes inside the Riftworm. On September 2nd, 2010, the fundraiser ended. The winner was Save Carmine, and therefore Clayton Carmine had survived Gears of War 3 and the Locust War. For me, I bought Save Carmine, but let me know which shirt you bought in the comments below if you did participate in this campaign at the time. Grains of War Grains of War was a cereal introduced in 2008, loaded with vitamins and nutrition, crunchy grainy goodness combined with the saturated glory and highly processed wholesomeness of marshmallows. The special marshmallow shapes make eating grains of war just as much fun as mowing down the locust plus a fun prize inside every box. I don't think many people knew about this and also the words Grains of War, paying homage to the Coal Train, as the Coal Train does indeed run on whole grain baby, yes sir. Grim Reaper Easter Egg The Epic Reaper is a multiplayer character for Gears of War Judgment, an extremely powerful multiplayer character who works off a whole different moveset. The Reaper is available only to a select few, ranging from Epic employees 
to community members that are picked every week for their contributions to the community. The Epic Reaper is non-canon and does not exist in the story of Gears of War, although there is an easter egg where you can fight him and is only available for online play. Players who manage to kill the Reaper are awarded with the Slayer of Samael medal and a weapon skin set dubbed Reaper Slayer for all starting weapons. PC exclusive campaign levels in Gears of War 1 and added to Ultimate Edition. So in the PC version of the original Gears of War, there are 5 added chapters to Act 5, Desperation, which takes place before the original release's special delivery chapter. In the 5th added chapter, Jurassic Proportions, the player fights a Brumac. The Brumac will be stalking you and there is no chance of pressing Q or X as you will need all the time to roadie run away and any cover you pass will be demolished by the Brumac. These added chapters were also added to the remastered version of Gears of War in Ultimate Edition. I personally, in my opinion, wasn't a big fan of these extra chapters because it just dragged things on as you're literally chasing a train that has a bomb on it but you're wasting too much time running away from a Brumac. Gears of War Exile Gears Exile was an on-rails Kinect shooter being developed by Epic Games. First revealed by Trademark on January the 18th, 2011. Little to no information on the game was ever released before its cancellation was announced on April the 8th, 2012. Gears of War 2 True Skill Ranking System The Gears 2 ranking system initially strictly used Microsoft's True Skill, which was created using chess ELO rating systems. This meant that ranks weren't calculated strictly by points or kills. Instead, a rank was determined by your wins and losses and whether or not you were favoured to win the match. Also, the five different icons used to express your rank are used as a general range of ranks attainable, so small fluctuations in your win-loss ratio won't instantly change your icon. Clayton Carmine's Alternate Fate So as Clayton Carmine survived the Fate of Carmine campaign as Save Carmine won, Carmine's Alternate Fate is rather satirical. He can be seen laying in a bathtub listening to the iconic Coltrane's rap. He sees a plate of bacon sitting on a table next to the radio. Unfortunately, as he reaches out to grab it, the radio falls into the bathtub, electrocuting and killing him. The cutscene ends with a shot of Clayton laying dead in the bathtub. Now of course, this isn't canon, this is an alternate fate, but I do really love this video. Gears of War Bootleg Toys So over the years, we've had toys and action figures on the Gears of War franchise, as with any blockbuster IP. There have also been bootleg knockoff toys and action figures as well. They have been a running meme in certain parts of the Gears community, so let's have a look at a few. We had Power Warriors, Zombie Wars, of course, cheap knockoffs of Gears from Pound Shops. We've also had the Bionicle of War, fake Gears of War figures as well. They look really funny to be honest, and the characters' faces are really, um, interesting to say the least. The faces just look like something straight out of the Goonies. It literally says Marcus Phoenix there as well, so they're not even trying to hide anything, just straight up ripping it off from Gears of War. And those are just some of the bootleg Gears toys over the years. Golden Chicken Easter Egg In Gears of War 3, in Act 1, Chapter 2, after you raise the lift so the Raven can land, there should be four tubes, two on either wall. Walk up to each one and wait until your character calls hello down the tube. Once you have shouted into all of them, a chicken should pop out of one. If you shoot at it enough times, it will mutate into a 10 foot tall lambent chicken and attack you by shooting fire out of its mouth. This easter egg is quite rare but I'm sure some of you hardcore Gears fans may know of this and when you kill the chicken, it will explode into a dust of flowers. Master Boomer the Boomers were large, brutish, markedly less intelligent locusts who earned their reputation as locust hordes heavy weapon specialists. Of course, several variations appeared over the course of the Locust War and across many games, comics and novels. However, in the development of Gears of War 3, another type of Boomer was in the works, a Master Boomer that would control wretches. It would have the same armour as regular Savage Boomers do, but they would carry a metal whip with blades at the end and a backpack that wretches would actually sit in. Unfortunately though, it was cancelled before production, which was very unfortunate, but it would have been very very cool to be able to see the Master Boomers in Gears of War. Gears FPS Mod The Gears of War FPS mod, called the Carmine Chronicles, 
is a first person single player action game using the first person shooter mod by Gridlock Shock. This Call of Duty Killzone 2 inspired campaign stars an ancestor of the Carmine Brothers who fight in the Pendulum Wars as a cog assassin. It's an interesting mod considering how Gears has always typically been a third person shooter so it's interesting to see it from a first person perspective as many fans have always wondered how Gears would play under an FPS lens for many many years. Previous Wretch Design The Locust Wretches are some of the most significant and iconic creatures of the Locust Horde. They are the first Locust to ever appear in Gears of War, and of course they have their iconic Wretch Design. But the Wretch had a different design when the Locust were originally called the Geist. As you can see, the design was later changed when the series was renamed Gears of War. Unreal Warfare Epic Games' James Golding revealed that Gears of War's original concept was a multiplayer focused class based shooter called Unreal Warfare. According to Unreal Engine lead programmer James Golding, it wasn't until several years after into on and off development that Unreal Warfare eventually morphed into Gears of War. Originally, the game was focused on the aforementioned class based multiplayer experience, still with a sci fi theme. But after completing work on Unreal Tournament 2003 and 2004, Epic discovered that times had changed. What they found was that the single player campaign had become a major selling point for not just shooters but all games and slowly started tweaking the concept, pulling it away from the Unreal brand and eventually Gears of War was formed. But that wasn't before the game saw some significant revisions, primarily with the enemies players faced, of course originally called Geist and the approach as it was a vehicle based shooter at one point. MLG Gears of War 1 Epic's last minute multiplayer add on to the original Gears of War would go on to inspire the birth of a competitive community which like Halo once eclipsed Call of Duty as a leading console esports title. A fast paced third person shooter, Gears of War was incomparable to anything from the same genre and thrived thanks to its unique and simple gameplay nurtured by fans to build something that the developer could never have foreseen. Unfortunately, the series failed to build on its strengths and suffered a premature death in the esports world. Its decline was partially a consequence of Epic's failure to address feedback from a competitive audience which, having lived and breathed gears, understood the game's most entertaining qualities. Instead, Epic opted to listen to a community between the hardcore and casual. These were gamers distressed by their own shortcomings against more skilled players and who demonized its most prominent weapon, the Nasha shotgun. Black Tusk Studios Microsoft Game Studios Vancouver is better known as Black Tusk Studios. It opened in 2010 and for a first party AAA game developer, it was fairly unknown. But after the acquisition of the Gears of War IP, Microsoft gave the keys to Gears of War to Black Tusk Studios, so this really put their studio on the map. They changed their name into the Coalition Studios, paying homage to the Coalition of Ordered Governments faction seen in the Gears universe. Ukon's Pet Ukon is the head scientist of the Locust Horde. He was first introduced in the Rise of Ram comics, but his story was fully fleshed out in Gears Tactics. He was a very interesting character and enemy, but according to concept art, he was actually originally going to have a pet with him. This is a pet worm or snake. It looks like a mini rift worm to be honest. There hasn't been anything like that in Gears before, so it was interesting to see a formidable locust foe potentially having his own little pet. Hive Mod Hive Mode is a horde variation game mode. No more mindless shooting to grunts and wretches. Now you have to defend strategic points, protect VIPs and assassinate locust commanders and many more. Of course it would be senseless without a swarm of bloodthirsty locust. This is a mod, and of course Gears PC always lacked a horde mode due to lack of Gears games released on PC. So one of the amazing Gears modders, BMBR1990, created the Hive mode, attempting to create a mode very similar to the original horde mode, but this time with added twists and some extra cool features. Geist or Mother when the Locust were originally going to be named the Geist, the Locust Queen, Queen Mirror, was originally going to be named the Geist or Mother. So here is some concept art of her previously. Of course, she has always looked somewhat similar to her final design, with some slight iterations over the years. Gears 3 Unreleased Maps Gears of War 3 had a lot of unreleased maps that didn't make the full release of the game and weren't included in the DLC drops for Gears 3. 
New maps that were unreleased included Blowout, Catacombs and Ember, as well as Gears 2 remade maps that were going to be released in Gears 3 but didn't make the cut as well, including All Father's Garden, Pan Favorite River and Security. Gears of War 3 released many awesome maps, but I'm surprised that some of these other maps weren't released. I'm curious as to whether they will finally be released as part of Gears of War 3's inevitable release on PC and Steam. Gears of War in Halo So there's a third person mod on Halo 5's Forge mode called Exuberant, made by GameCheat. And this allows you to pick different third person cameras. And in the background, you can see that someone actually made Gridlock for Breakout in Halo 5's Forge mode, which I think is very cool. They did a great job in bringing this to life and generally Halo in third person looks awesome. Gears of War from Wish, Inversion. Inversion is a PC game that's a knockoff of Gears of War. The bad guys are called the Lutadors and are cheap knockoffs of the Locust. They even have these weird bayonets on their guns, similar to the Retro Lancer from Gears. It also took some ideas from Dead Space as well, but yeah, pretty much Gears of War from Wish overall. Sword of Chicken Easter Egg. Now I'm not going to go through the whole easter egg as it's lengthy, but in Gears 3 Act 4 Chapter 1 on Insane, when you go around the corner and find the door at the very end of the wall, kick down the door and inside will be an ammo crate, a hammer of dawn and a broken arcade machine. When you kick the arcade game a couple of times, it will start to work. You can then interact with the game and start to play Sword of Chicken. You play the chicken which has a cog helmet attached on its head with two sort of shotguns fighting a horde of lambent polyps. Unfortunately though, the game will break within a couple of seconds of playing it. Brumac Ammo Carrier The Brumac was one of the largest species of hollow creature and these giant reptilian-like creatures were enslaved by the locust and used in battle as massive sentient tanks. Now according to concept art from Gears Tactics, the Brumac was originally meant to be accompanied by Brumac ammo carriers, strange creatures that supply the Brumac with ample ammunition. These creatures could be how a Brumac reload its ranged weapons, which is very interesting and I personally would have liked to see this and it would have been another hollow creature that the Locust Horde would have enslaved. Gears 1 Troika Gunner Multiplayer Character In one of the near final builds of Gears of War 1, in multiplayer, the Locust Sniper was referred to as the Troika Gunner. This is interesting, considering the Troika Gunner wasn't playable in Gears 1, and I don't think the Troika Gunner has ever been playable in multiplayer before. Correct me if I'm wrong though, and if you don't know, the Troika Gunner is one of the Logstrong variations seen throughout the Gears universe. They tend to be seen using the Troika Machine Gun. Jonathan Harper in Ram's Shadow In Gears 3's notorious DLC, Ram's Shadow, Jonathan Harper, a character from the Gears comics, was going to be the main playable character instead of Michael Barrick. Of course, John was eventually cut, since Michael Barrick wasn't a fleshed out character, so he was easier to expand upon, so he was a better fit for Ram's Shadow, alongside Min. Palace Guard Sword Found in the Unreal Editor was the Palace Guard Sword, Another cut concept for Gears of War 2 most likely. Of course palace guards were made up of the most decorated and accomplished drones in the Locust Horde's army and they were charged with the defense of the palace and the queen. The palace guards have been very unique compared to the traditional Theron guards and any other Theron variation. So it appears that there may have been plans to equip the palace guards with their own swords as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Locust Dragon in the E3 2004 tech demo presentation on Unreal Engine 3 by Epic Games, early Gears of War prototypes were shown, and so we get to see early Gears assets. One of the assets used to explain the technology is a Locust Dragon by the looks of it. This would have been before the creatures were called the Locust, but it definitely has the Locust look all over it, just like the other hollow creatures. Of course, this didn't end up being canon, but it is a very interesting creature to say the least. So that, my friends, is the Gears of War Iceberg Explained. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy the video, consider subscribing for more lore related content and more timeless videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host Abs, and I'll catch you next time.